have a top three uh, for this identical card challenge. And uh, we've chosen a winner. So you want to talk about them? Sure, yeah. Uh, when we do our surveys, when, when we put out our surveys for the games that all the judges see, uh, the, the three main categories that we sort of use to think about how these games are going to qualify are mechanics, theme, and replayability. And there are a few little wrinkles in there that we'll kind of address, but uh, each of these either really shined in one of those categories or did all of them well. So our top three alphabetically. The first one is Hoplites. Next up is Interceptor. Who puts a card and make his code. Our next game is Lint and Fluff. About a small mouse venturing across your game collection to get lint for its nest. For example, the mouse faces a monster. Hoplite is definitely the basket weave. I mean, if that's if we're looking for a single term, you know, it's just it's the it's the setup and movement. Sure. So I would say the the uniqueness of Hoplite put it as far along as it was because it yep. was so interesting. Uh, Lint and Fluff is probably the decision making. Uh, had really cool decision making from your hand to the table. Uh, lots of. Lots of neat choices. Yep, quality right. of decisions. Quality of decisions was, was something that's tough in a small game like mm -hmm. this. And I would say that's one where the decisions mattered the most of, of a lot of the games that we saw. Yeah. Interceptor. Just the head game. Um, we talked about with, I mean, regularly with 18 cards, having stuff, having an outside of the cards is, is key. But with one card design, uh, yeah, it's that headspace and everything that's happening outside of the actual game. Right. I feel like other games tried to create that metagame aspect mm -hmm. of it, and this one just succeeded the most. The other thing that we had on our list then was was the theme and sort of the integration of that theme. Uh, so how about the one that is the most thematic? What do you think about Lint and Fluff? Uh, so that I so so I think of theme and I think of like product development and where like where this could be at its biggest and we always compare it to Mouse Guard or um, uh, Mice and Mystics or anything like that so I could see that as a as having story and really working like that right of of these three I think that is the one that is the the richest in theme yep. and certainly it's integrated right in there um, you know the way you get points you can. If you're trying to break through the saran wrap and you try to poke it with the sword, it's ineffectual. You actually need the claws to rip it. Yeah. So I'm just like even stuff like that. The decisions are a grappling hook that twists the card. Yeah. Like if you're <laughs> actually playing as the card and it spins around. Yeah. Hoplite is gladiators in a head-to-head -head battle, and uh, what I like about the theme or the theme integration is the theme's cool because. It reminds me of structure. It's one of those that's not new or different. We didn't look at this and say, oh, the first ever, you know, head-to-head yeah. -head battle game. But the way the integration was important for this one, where yeah. um, it made sense, and even the cards themselves, um, you have your shield side, and that literally defended. You had yeah. your, um, the tip of your spear is your attack side, and then over here is your capture. And then the way you capture was that you reach someone's back, which has no text on it. Yeah. <laughs> what we like is when the theme shows in the gameplay, not so much in your blurb, right. you know, that precedes the gameplay. And the theme of this one is funny because like I was playing it before I even even knew what the icons were. Like I, I'm playing it and it didn't matter. I'm like, right. you know, which is a, is a knock on any kind of theme if you're playing it, it doesn't matter. But it's also, if it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Like, yep. So some of those things don't necessarily have to be overarching world building theme. Yep. It's that your mechanics from a gameplay perspective line up with player expectations in terms of, okay, if I do this, I should get points. Oh, I do get points. If I do this, it's not as good, but it stops you. Or those kind of things sort of count as overall integration. I feel like Hoplite is a game that your first play, you can be really, really terrible at, right? When you start <laughs> moving around and you realize that like, you know, you're just showing your back to all you your opponents. Split off and you, you split off section your things and they right. can't do anything. And so for me, the replayability for this comes from as soon as you're halfway through your first play, you're like, oh, I would do this differently next time. And I love games like that. I love oh, yeah. games that yep. immediately you're like, I can do this better. I want to, you know, I want to play you again. I can it's, get better. It's a hone your skill game. Very, and, that's a great and way to say it. There's a, 
so many games that aren't that because there's so much going on. There's so much randomness, you don't know what you're gonna get. This one, you can approach it in the same way every time and just try to hone your skill. Right. Uh, Interceptor. <laughs> Interceptor is one of those that, because it's gonna play so much differently depending on the signals that you use, it's gonna play wildly differently with different, different people, groups. Yeah. Like, you know, your silly and loud groups. And where, you're at is, um, <laughs> where you're at is a cool one because if you're somewhere where it's kind of quiet. Like. Right. Well, even even if you have a really, you know, min maxi gamer crowd, they're gonna be very seriously staring at each oh, other yeah. as opposed to when we played it, you know, everyone's got some pizza, yeah. we're having a few drinks, and it's just it's fun for entirely different reasons. I think that this one's pretty high on the replayability chart. Uh, and Lint and Fluff for replayability, um, it's a solo score your highest score game, which also is that sort of hone your skill thing, but in a little bit of a different way. Um, trying to beat your own high score, trying to, you can compare scores online, I see a lot of that. Right. Um, in the rule book, you know, you can see an example and try to beat that score. So those, those kind of solo games get constant replayability from me. Some people put a lot of things on the card. Some people um, use the card uh, so where it filled the table and it, and it looks like a whole bunch of things going on. It's really hard to kind of differentiate anything like that. And some people use the card, like made a game where you can't imagine it with any more cards. And that's, that's a, it wasn't on our list of, of actual points to score by. But it, it, those shot to the top where the game excelled as an identical card game and would not excel as a regular card game. Right, and, and I sort of feel like the, the analogy that I use for this is that we're trying to make an identical card game, right? And so if you're cramming lots of stuff on the cards and, and using cards as score trackers, and you're, you're sort of making them non-identical, right? You're, you're simulating a larger one. game. And so I, I thought of that as if someone's punching you in the arm and you say stop, and they say, oh, they do that. Like, I didn't punch you in the arm, I punched you in the shirt, right? Like technically that's <laughs> yeah, correct, but that's not, what we don't want technically, you want that person to stop punching you. So you ready to do this thing? You ready, ready to announce the winner? Shuffle. I feel, shuffle I feel and like- Give me one. Shuffle and give you one? No, no, no. We put a lot of time into this. We talked to all of our, uh, all of our judges, we talked to the people that played the games with us, we played it, yep. uh, and our winner, Interceptor. Interceptor. Interceptor is the winner of the September Identical Card Design Challenge. Yeah, it was a great identical card game. That's, that's one thing is this game does not need a single other card to do exactly what it needs to do, and that's be super fun. But we had a blast playing it. Um, everyone had a blast playing it. We, we tried to break it, it didn't break. I had a blast watching it. I taught you That's guys true. how to play, yeah. watched you play, and laughed the whole time, which says so much about the game. It's um, fun, <laughs> and you, you, you should be playing it. It was, it was great. Yeah, it was fantastic. And it's, you know, it's, a, it's a bar game, it's a convention game where I wait people to show up. It's the game you play eight times in a row, and it's not a filler game. This was just so good. I mean, so good. <laughs> I just think about the, the testing night, and that so many laughs, and we talked about that yeah. later, and it was, it was fantastic. So congratulations yeah. uh, for Interceptor. Well, we there's there was too many amazing submissions to even just pick top 20 and, and narrow it down. Yeah. There was some that we had to recognize for, for one thing or another. Uh, and so I get the honor of presenting the first one. Uh, the first one we went and called the Onomatopoeia Award. And the Onomatopoeia Award goes to Boom Snap Clap. <laughs> okay, see, so I already would have lost a point because I, I was too slow. So Boom Snap Clap is a rhythm game. You're laying cards out and you're playing them in that rhythm. And you try to mix up the rhythm. For people that follow, you'd have to play a more difficult rhythm. Um, set the tempo and then have to... Right. Yeah, I love it. So neat. Give us all a laugh. <laughs> um, so yes, we will recognize Boom Snap Clap as the winner of the Onomatopoeia Award. <laughs> uh, the Minimalism Award is a game that you may have seen us play on a prior uh, episode of this, and it's called Throw. <laughs> and it's minimalist minimal name. Minimal, minimal name. Uh, the game is just throw a card the furthest. So minimalist rules. Minimalist rules. Minimalist card design. The card is just the rules <laughs> on the card. The minimalism award. It was fun. It was yeah. cool. And so the last thing, we'll probably do some different awards each contest, but one we'll try to do each contest is we're going to enter a game into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Hall of Fame videos or Hall of Fame entries just have something about them, something that we all like. This this one got shared to all the judges. Every judge saw this thing, uh, yeah. so I will let you present. Half my family. Right. Like, <laughs> I, was, I was texting people. Everybody like. at the gaming weekend that I just went to, <laughs> yeah, they exactly. all saw this video. So I'll let you present uh, the Hall of Fame. So this one absolutely 
caught everybody's eye, and it is a game called Bring 'em Home. And we're just going to show you instead of saying anymore. Yeah, enjoy. You can play between two and four. The player starts who wants it more. Place card next to other cards. It's not until the end you score. From seven years to hold and dryness, I fun and learn is what this game about. When you storm and count your score, it's difficult to pitch all the That's the end of the identical card challenge and the start of our um, of our, our monthly challenges. So we have to thank everybody who, who submitted, all 228 of you, actually probably more with all the code designs. Yes. Um, anybody who helped out with those games or tested those games, we have our, I believe it was 12 judges, um, which I'll say, it's me, Mike, uh, Nat Levan, Jay Treat, James O'Connor, Matthew Mitchell, uh, Jessica Mitchell, Michael Lee, Travis Magrum, Mark McGee, Ben Beagle, Rob Kramer. However many that was. We, have, we had a lot of judges. <laughs> and they were either in person or, uh, you know, doing videos and, and stuff like that. Uh, who else do we have to thank? I think it's everybody. Next month, and it's next week's video, we'll be going into full detail. But the next uh, restriction is design a game with no table or surface. Can you... <laughs> no table or surface, so uh, all the game is in the hands and on the arms. <laughs> whatever, oh, surface. whatever we see. Oh, it's a surface. Smash that like button. <laughs>